just your set. Good evening. Tonight, do not adjust your set. Looks at one of the major problems in Britain today. <laughs> Craftsmanship. <laughs> Yes, London, 1968. And what are the problems facing the average Englishman today? I've got a boil on my knee. Well, I've got my mother coming to tea and there's no sugar and Mrs Neville's bun shop is closed on Thursdays. My brother thinks he's a sardine, sleeps on a piece of toast, crumbs. <laughs> ah. Hello again. <laughs> Flying saucers. Where do they come from? Where are they going to? And how much do they cost? Thank you. Tonight, the Do Not Adjust Your Set team investigates. <laughs> This evening we have with us a man who has actually seen a flying saucer. Tell me, Mr. Arnold, you saw this flying saucer near your home in Devon? Yes, I certainly did. Can you describe it? Yes, it was a small silvery object flying some 50 feet above the trees and it had a small head and a beak and was flapping its wings. Are you sure it wasn't a bird? A what? A bird. That's what it was. It was a bird. It's a bird. It's a bird. Thank you. It gives you some indication of the mystery that surrounds these objects. <clears throat> but at the basis of all this lies the unanswered problem of is there life on any other planet? One man who thinks there is is Mr. Alpha TK3. Mr. Alpha TK... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alpha TK3, you think there is life on other planets? Yes, I do. <laughs> what makes you so certain? I know I have seen it. If you don't mind my saying so, I find that rather difficult to believe. All those who do not believe will be taken over. I see. <laughs> well, obviously, no one can ever be certain. Only it remains for me to say to all you that... <laughs> all those who do not believe will be taken over. It was, it was a seagull. I realised that it was a seagull. I see it. It's February, and here is our painting of the month. <laughs> Do we spend too much of our time watching television? Here at Viewership Survey Limited, our computer calculated on Monday night between the hours of 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock, more than 98 billion people were watching television in my living room alone. <laughs> this means we need a new computer. If you have one, will you pop it on a postcard and send it to me at this address? Me, this address, London W2. I'll just repeat that. That. Do not adjust your set. Say, stamp out this kind of behaviour in British parks. <laughs> well, that's all from us here at Roundup. We won't be back next week or ever again. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, madam. Can Good I morning. help you? Um, yes, I'd like your advice about the valuables in my house. I don't think they're terribly safe. <laughs> 
I see. Yes. Well, let's see what we can do to put them into safe hands for you. Thank shall you. We? Yes, fine. Uh, your name and address, please, ma'am. Oh, uh, here's my card. I see. Thank you very much. Now, is your height uh, near to where the neighbours could hear screams or cries for help or that sort of no, thing? No, no, it's completely deserted in its own grounds. I see. It's yes. completely deserted in its own yes, grounds. Extensive grounds. Extensive grounds. Mm-hmm. And is it left unattended for long periods? <laughs> Uh, only on a Friday evening between 7 and 11.30 p.m. when I go to my bridge club. I see. Only on Friday. Friday, yes, yes. 7.30. That's right. tomorrow, isn't it, ma'am? That's right, yes. Yes, yes, yes tomorrow. Right. And where do you actually keep all your valuables? Oh, most of them are in the wall safe in the study, but I do keep all my jewels in my bedroom, locked up. I see. Very wise. Very yes. nice. In the, in the bedroom, locked yes. up. Yes. yes. Where do you actually keep the key for that, ma'am? Hey, you'll never guess. <laughs> oh, do tell. <laughs> well, actually, I keep it. <laughs> Really, madam? <laughs> I'm very original. <laughs> no one ever think of looking there. <clears throat> well, it's very cunning, isn't it? Yes. Well, madam, let me see. I'm afraid you're not very well protected, are no, you? No, I'm not. That's a whole trouble. That's why I came to you. Good. Well, I'm glad you did, because here's my advice to you. Yes. This evening, or rather tomorrow evening when you go out, oh God, possibly, yes. would be leave your lights off and leave all the windows and doors open. Oh. Yes, this will put off any intended robber. Oh, I see. Yes, and then the next precaution I'd take, if I yes. was you, was to get all your valuables, put them in a large stack, place them on the dining room table, next to a flask of tea and a rather, rather large plate full of sandwiches. Oh, I see. Oh, thank you that very much. That anybody away. Yes. Oh, I feel much safer now. Thank you so much, Good. Your help. Fine, madam. It's a pleasure. Um, five guineas, please. Oh, yes. Money well spent. Good. Oh, oh donate the rest to your favourite charity. Oh, that's very kind of you, madam. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm afraid it would excuse me, madam. I must rush now. You see, there's a shop being burgled. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, It's all right. I've just finished. (laughs) Goodbye. Charming young man. Oh, uh, and now, this week's deliberate mistake, the Banzo Dig Doody Bin. Manners have no place. Dear, 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 no, dear, 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 no, dear, dear, oh, dear, no. After they have eaten you all, they never say their grace. Dear, 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 no, dear, 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 no, dear, dear, oh, dear, no. Hunting tigers can be ripping fun. Like three fine mice, see the hunters run. Hunting tigers out in India. Out in, out in, out in India, yeah. You all know how peevish tigers are. Out in, out in, out in India. They bite, they scratch, they make an awful fuss. It's no use stroking them and saying, puss, 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 no. Hunting tigers out in India. Out in, out in, out, out in, in India. India. Yeah. By Jove, Carruthers, I'm awfully frightened. Frightened be like me. But you're shaking all over. I'm not shaking, I'm just doing the shimmy, that's all. Yeah. 
Part of you, they fix their fretwork sets. Dear, 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 no, dear, 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 no, dear, dear, oh, dear, no. Tigers don't go out on rainy nights. They fall me to whet their appetites. Hunting tigers out in India. Out in, out in, out in India. Yeah. La, 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 la. Plonk a titty, plonk, plonk, titty, plonk, plonk. <laughs> Sorry. I take as my text today, thou shalt not nick lead off the church roof. <laughs> Jeremiah 4 verse 13. The other evening I was having supper with my lovely lady wife in the crypt, when suddenly a large, a large piece of fried bread fell from the ceiling and landed on my plate. Pushing aside the plaster I was eating, I said to my wife, stone me glad, they're at it again. Mark 12, 7, New English Translation. <clears throat> Get me my clerical gun. Remember what happened last time you took a pot shot at someone on the roof, she shouts. Well, <laughs> how was I to know it was an angel? <clears throat> anyway, I dashed outside at the double. Exodus 1, 2. And there in the darkness, I came across a tall, thin figure clad only in black. Good evening, constable, I said. Malachi 6, 1. Thou shalt not steal, he said. Silly fellow. Then off I went, up the tower, round the cornices, round the leaning buttresses, tiptoe across the roof, taking care not to knock off any gargoyles. But alas, Habakkuk 16.4, the bird had flown, and all I saw was, but if you want to know who did it, come along to Evensong this evening. Revelations 6.15. <laughs> When I go to the theatre, I always sit in a box. <laughs> committee meeting to discuss last week's ladies night held in the vicarage hall and to discuss ways of rebuilding the vicarage hall hey, it were a grand night ted yes and <laughs> next year there'll be no stripping ernie specklesfield oh well they said take it off they were referring to your act not your clothes and who let the vicar sing i don't i don't i don't i told you were going to sing i thought you meant a hymn i've never heard such songs in mixed company and who gave him those jokes the bishop oh i <laughs> And your magic act, Norman Higgins. Hmm? You're supposed to give the wallets back after you've taken them. When did your case come up? Tuesday. I'm not surprised that was the chief constable's wife you sawed in half. Fine time to forget how to do it. I will have never done it before, Tim. Oh, aye. Okay. And Ina, look, yeah. your snake dance. Yeah. I thought you were supposed to dance with the snake. I couldn't catch it. Miss Pennyweather did, though, didn't she? Aye. <laughs> Took the hospital four hours to cut a three. <laughs> and who wrote Just Married on the ambulance? Hey, we're only in fun, Ted. That's what you said about your impersonation of the singing nun. 
She doesn't wear handlebar moustache and leopard skin underpants, does she? Uh, no, no, she doesn't, no. Who gave her the idea? Uh, it was the bishop, Ted. And it were you who put the passion pills in the junior school mistress's drinks. <laughs> I never thought she had it in her. I well, none of us did, Ted. Well, why didn't you pull the curtain down when she started to strip? Well, I thought it was supposed to be educational. It was, it was. Lucky the vicar was in hospital by then. And where did he get the passion pills from, anyway? To Bishop. Oh, aye. <laughs> well, it were you, Fred, who were responsible for fireworks display. Well, you may have set them off all right. Inside. Ah, oh, well, it were cold outside. If I won't be up a tree. Aye. <laughs> hey, hey, well, we're going to have to hey, rebuild hey, the vicarage hall. Hey. And that part of town. Right, well, it's time to pass on to the next business of the committee, which is how to raise money to bail the bishop out. <laughs> We bring you another exciting adventure in the life of Captain Fantastic. Last week, he lost track of Mrs. Black on Nowhere Station, only to discover that she had left behind her visiting card. This week, he follows her to the address on the visiting card and tracks Mrs. Black to her lair. Uh, I don't know, I think that's enough, Cameron, but, um... <laughs> Yes, you can stop now. <laughs> stop, 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 stop! Oh. <laughs> Good heaven, man. This is Captain Fantastic speaking. Thanks to my good fortune in finding Mrs. Black's card, I soon traced her to her evil hideout. Boldly I searched the front of the house for, for an entrance, but in vain. to gain possession of her horrible handbag and deprive her of her evil power. Where to look first? Was that what she kept under her bed? I thought I was going potty. Suddenly, I heard her approaching. <laughs> instantly concealed myself. <laughs> approaching the wardrobe. I had to think fast. Sheesh! That had been a narrow escape. Now I can see the ember lying on the bed, unguarded. <laughs> Quiet as a mouse, I could. 
crept towards the bed. The danger was intense, but I had to get that bag. It was useless. I had to try another approach. was on the other side again. The situation was decidedly tricky. Will Captain Fantastic succeed? Does Mrs. Black know he's there? What is she doing with her horrible handbag? Watch next week's Captain Fantastic. <laughs> world instead of being me I'd have a scepter and a throne the girls would envy me I'd dine out at the best hotel with Simon D I'd talk to Mr. Jamaica and Miss 1942 and Miss Orslo Borders and the one I hate, man, do. But all them other titles wouldn't mean one thing to me. I wouldn't envy them one bit, for I'd be Miss World. As a peacock and lovely as the queen, but nothing comes of all my dreams. I just go from bad to worse. Despite my schemes, I'm still, it seems, plain Mister. You.